Hi everyone, it's Pete Wright with PluggedInPhoto.com and I'm here today to give you a tutorial in Photoshop on how to create a rubber stamp of your logo so that you can put your logo on your sales pieces, your display pieces, things like that very quickly and easily. Alright, so what we're going to do with this particular lesson is go through and show you how to create a brush preset that you can use as a rubber stamp to put your logo on your images or marketing pieces. So what I've got right here is our logo typed out on, t on two layers. So the background layer is just plain white and then on top is the actual black uh, PW photography written out. So what we do here, and let me preface this by saying we have multiple logos. We have one that's a PW Seniors one that has all kinds of decorative stuff on it that has its own brush. Then we have the more simple ones like this that we use for our standard portraiture, weddings, bridal portraits, uh, just anything that we would do a wall portrait of, or just for uh, marketing and print pieces for our standard photography that's not high school senior. Uh, that's just a little bit simpler and one of the main things we do when we do a portrait piece that's a client piece for a wall portrait we only put the PW on it we don't put the photography underneath just the PW in one of the corners and then for print pieces uh, marketing things like that we would put PW photography and then for a store display piece or a doctor's office or somewhere like that where we've got a display for people to potentially find us for client work we would actually have the PW and then pwphotography.com underneath so that not only when they see our work would they know who made it but they'd also know how to find us and contact us so one of the things you can't tell obviously when you're looking at the screen is that the PW here is in a 72 font size and then underneath the photography is a size 12 it's important that I made that a larger font at 72 uh, for a few reasons that I'm going to get into later on but I just wanted to give you a starting point in terms of what size I made this so what we're going to do here and now is go through and we're going to make our selection and in a PC environment you would hold down control in a Mac environment you'd hold down command and then what you're going to do is go to the layer the active layer with your logo in my case it's layer one and you're going to click in the box right here and what that does is selects the entire layer, that entire layer. And you'll see the racing ants, which means it's basically got a selection uh, around that part of the, the, the image. And that's important. That works for pretty much anything. If you're trying to make an, a selection of an entire portion of a layer, then you can do that. It's a good tip to use as you work in Photoshop on anything. So now that that's done, we're going to go up to Edit. We're going to go down to Define Brush Preset and that's going to bring up this dialog box and the first thing we're going to do is go through and name it. We're going to call it PW Logo. Now what you'll see to the left of that is a box that has a representation of that that rubber stamp brush that we've created and you'll notice it's kind of squished compared to the screen here where it's a little bit more spread out the reason being is it has to make a square representation of every single brush it doesn't mean the brush is going to look like that it's just giving you a square representation so that in the box up top where your palette is that shows you all of the brushes when you go up to select you can see a basic representation of it but when you use it it will look normal just the way you created it the other thing you'll see is right here is the number five 513. The 513 represents the size, how large or small the brush is. So it can be anywhere from 0 to 2500, 2500 being the largest. Uh, for something like this, anywhere between 500 and 1000 is, is fine. You don't want to be too, too large because there's really no use for it, but you definitely don't want to be too small. That's more important because if you make it too small, then resing it up or making it larger can really hurt the quality of it. You start getting pixelation and really weird edges. But if you make it large and you size it down, it's much, much easier. It doesn't hurt the quality of it and you've got more information to work with. So we're going to click OK and then we're going to go over to our brush and you'll see it's already been created. As soon as I hit create brush preset, preset and I hit create right there it drops down and it becomes the very last one. The most cre recent one that you create becomes the last brush on your palette. So it's there and I'm going to go ahead and select that so it's my brush when it's time. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to bring up an image. So this is a bridal portrait and we're going to show you how to do to actually apply this. Now, 
one of the things that we always do in our studio is we create a new layer which in the PC world would be control shift N and the Mac world would be, would be command shift N or you can go up to layer new layer and up here you'll see the keyboard shortcut so we'll go ahead and do that for the sake of getting it up there we go and it's now active you'll see the new layer has been created now once the new layer is there the biggest benefit is I can click anywhere but before we do that at this point you'll see the top color here is black if I click on that I can make my rubber stamp any color I want so if I want to go in and select a color with a color picker from the image I can or if I want to just create a color randomly I can I'm gonna stick with black so I'm gonna hit cancel because black is the top color and I'm going to go ahead and click stamp. I'm going to click the button to stamp it. Just one time really quick and it's there. Now, the biggest benefit to me of putting it on an additional layer is now that I can click the move key and I can put it anywhere I want and it's not affecting that background layer. Now, another thing to keep in mind when you're doing the brush is size-wise, you can go up here and grab your slider, make it as large or as small. You can go up to 2500 like I said or small very quickly and easily by doing that or you can go right above your inner key on the keyboard you'll see two brackets and the left bracket makes it smaller the right bracket key makes it larger uh, in this case we've already stamped it at 513 which was the original size and it's done but that's just a quick little tip to show you how you can make things larger and smaller like I said before typically we would put this in the bottom right hand corner in this case it's a little bit brighter over here so it works better in the left hand corner um, another tip for placement with this is typically we usually go about a half inch away from the side and a half inch away from the bottom and usually what I'll do is go through with the ruler real quick and draw it out just so I can be sure and the reason for doing that that's about right right there the reason for doing that is when they go through to frame it you want to allow a quarter inch for the frame to cover and give another quarter inch of space between the frame and the edge of the photo another thing for the size of the font we usually go about a half an inch in height and in this case it's a little bit larger just because we put it up there uh, at that size and I can now grab uh, the edit free transform to make it smaller edit free transform and I'm going to lock and drag that down to where the PW itself is roughly a half an inch in size the reason for that is we just don't want it to be too gaudy and overpower the image. Uh, if it was a display piece for a store or a doctor's office, I would make the PW an inch because I'm not worried about it looking gaudy. I'm worried about people being able to see and find us once they see our work and they like it. In this case, uh, we've got it placed there. It's about the size we want it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and make a quick adjustment on color. Now we could have done this like I said earlier by using the color picker and selecting the color of the brush, but in this case I knew I wanted it to be either black and white. Once we put it there I decided maybe white would be better. So I'm going to hit Control L P C or Command L in Mac and bring up my levels palette. And all I'm going to do is grab the output levels. I'm going to grab the black slider and pull it all the way to white. And what that's doing is taking the dark information and making it white. You could do the exact reverse if it was white and drag the white all the way to the black and it will take something that's white and make it black. So we're going to click OK. And now what I'm going to do is go over to my my uh, layer style palette which is the FX down here and click on drop shadow I'm going to turn off use global light because I like the 120 degree angle I like the shadow being cast down and I'm going to move this out probably about 12 and I'm going to make my size about 16 15 or 16 and you do this to taste you'll kind of figure out where you like it and sometimes it's a little different based on how big you're making the actual font and then I'm going to click OK and what that did was just make it stand out just a little bit more so that it's not flat and I'll kind of go backwards and show you there it is in black there it is switched to white and there it is with drop shadow we'll zoom in real quick for you to see the difference black white drop shadow just gives it a little bit classier look let me turn off the guides real quick and that's basically what you're looking at in terms of a signature piece um, one thing you might want to do to kind of test the size that you like is 
print one of these on an 8 by 10 print one on 11 by 14 16 by 20 if you can just for test pieces just so you can find sizes that you're comfortable with and make note of the size that you do uh, when you make make your test pieces uh, for us anything that's larger than an 8 by 10 gets a PW stamped on it just because we feel like if it's going to be displayed on a wall somewhere it needs to have our signature on it so that is how you create a brush set and I hope you enjoy using it and sign all of your work thanks mm -hmm.